Around the world, tracks of steel and timber have tied countries together, providing quick and effective transportation for people and their products. And yet, sometimes timetables and travel plans change, not by choice, but by chance. In Italy, a train enters a tunnel on a routine run. When it comes out, most of its passengers are dead. March 1944. World War II is in its fifth year, but in Italy, it is all but over. Allied troops have been behind Nazi lines since January, and Rome is about to fall. Life is particularly difficult in villages south of the capital, between the port city of Naples and the large agricultural town of Potenza. The most efficient way to travel to the southern provinces is by train, but only those with a permit can purchase a ticket, and only a certain number of passengers are allowed to travel each week. Most don't even bother with a ticket, choosing instead to hop freight trains and ride the rails to their destinations. Station crews are used to seeing hundreds of so-called black marketeers riding wherever they can find room. One of the most popular trains is the 8017. Every Friday night, it leaves Naples for its weekly run to Bari on the East Coast. In 1944, the railway line in Bari-Naples was a very important one. I think it was more important then than it is today. That line represented the connection between two important cities of southern Italy, and it went through the whole Basilicata region, the Potenza province, and the Matara province. Almost everyone knows the 8017 by its nickname, the Black Market Express. Although smuggling is officially prohibited, authorities turn a blind eye, realizing that for many, it is the only way to feed their families. Friday evening, March 2nd, 1944. The 8017 pulls out of Naples Station, right on schedule. It has 42 freight cars, four passenger coaches, and a caboose. As soon as it leaves the station, hundreds of non-paying passengers climb aboard. There were more than 500 people on the train for sure. Those 500 people, though, were not in passenger cars like we know them. They were on cargo cars, either inside them or on the car's bumpers, which was a very dangerous thing to do. Ciro Pernici is one of those passengers, a young man of 19 who gets on the train in Salerno. He is on his way to Bellamuro to look for food for himself and his four brothers. Domenico Mielli is one of the paying customers, an olive oil salesman who takes the train every week. Luigi Cozzolino also has a ticket. He is a shopkeeper from the village of Racina, traveling with his wife and eight-year-old son. As usual on this run, two powerful locomotives are at the front of the train. 25-year-old head engineer Matteo Giuliani is at the controls. Matteo Giuliani, in spite of his young age, was regarded as a myth of the railway of Campania because he was very good. Back then, to be regarded as a very good engineer at 25 was like to be a successful manager at 30 or 40 today. It meant you had reached a high level of professionalism. Together, the locomotives can pull as much as 500 tons up the steady incline of the Apennine Mountains. On this particular run, they are fueled with low-grade coal from Yugoslavia, and it takes extra shovelfuls to give them the power they need. 
le condizioni nelle quali si trovava the situation in southern Italy at the time did not allow for better quality coal the war situation demanded that the military got the good quality coal at 12 minutes after 12 midnight the black market express pulls into Balvano station with well over 500 passengers on board the train exceeds the maximum weight for a two-engine pull by 11 tons. A drizzly sleet has been falling most of the day, leaving the tracks wet and glossy. At 12.50 a.m., station master Vincenzo Malio gives the all-clear signal to the engineers. As the train pulls away from Balvano station, brakeman Michele Paolo climbs into the caboose. Another brakeman, Giuseppe Di Venuto, jumps into the 11th car from the locomotives. Station master Vincenzo Malio sends word to the next stop that the train is on its way, then hands the controls to his assistant, Giuseppe Salonia. Bella Muro, the next station on the line, is eight kilometers away. It's a rugged stretch of track framed by a huge mountain gorge and characterized by a succession of trestle bridges, extensive tunnels, and a steep incline. The line starts at low level and reaches Potenza, which is at over 800 meters above sea level. The angle of the track is 13 one thousandths, which means it rises 13 centimeters every 1,000 meters, so there is an angle for sure. As the 8017 exits the tunnel near Balvano Station, engineer Matteo Giuliani orders his firemen to stoke the fire with more coal to make sure they can climb the upgrades ahead. The express passes through a second tunnel and crosses a trestle that feeds into a long cavern cut deep into the mountain. It is known as Galleria dell'Arni. La uh, Galleria è la più lunga. The Galleria della Armi is the longest and also the one with fewer air intakes. Due to the mountain shape, the tunnel did not have the big windows that in the other tunnels would allow the circulation of fresh air. 200 meters into the Galleria, the wheels of the express begin to slip on the wet rails. The heavy train slows to a stop then begins to roll backwards. In the 11th car, brakeman Giuseppe Di Venuto feels the train moving back and throws on the manual brakes. The train stops with only two cars and the caboose outside the tunnel. In base ai regolamenti ferroviari, il treno non poteva retrocedere. I frenatori, perché è probabile che il treno fosse dotato di Railway regulations did not allow the train to back up. Governato dalle locomotive e di una parte di freno governato da personale. The brakeman saw the train back up and maybe thought some cars had gotten loose, which was not an unusual thing. Il treno si fosse spezzato, era una, cioè che dei vagoni si fossero staccati, non era un incidente così eccezionale. So they followed the Inside the tunnel, head engineer Matteo Giuliani again orders more coal to help power them up the incline, unaware that this particular coal is part of the problem. Di sicuro una causa una parte rilevante nella sciagura ha il carbone. An important role in the tragedy was played for sure by the coal from Yugoslavia that the engines were burning. Molto fumo, ma non dava molta forza. The coal would give a lot of smoke, but not a lot of energy. I think this caused the train to enter the tunnel slowly and then stop in the tunnel without being able to start moving again. Quando aveva attraversato la galleria, il treno si ferma, non riesce a ripartire. The crew shovels more fuel into the fireboxes of both locomotives, but it's no use. The wheels continue to spin on the slippery tracks, unable to find a grip. Il treno non riusciva ad andare avanti perché non aveva la forza, diciamo, le, il vapore non era così forte, così... Eh, the train could not go forward because the steam was not enough to move it, and it could not back up because some cars were stopping it. Then we have to remember the decisive element. The engines would emit smoke so rapidly and abundantly that it filled up the tunnel in a few minutes. 
Many of the passengers are asleep, oblivious to the fact that the poisonous smoke trapped in the tunnel is creeping into the cars. Most passengers on the Black Market Express are unaware that the train has stopped. Like many, 19-year-old Ciro Pernici is asleep in one of the freight cars, a heavy military cloak wrapped around his head to keep warm. Shopkeeper Luigi Cozzolino and his family are dozing in one of the passenger coaches. Olive oil salesman Domenico Miele is still awake. In the last few minutes, he's developed a nagging cough and he's feeling sick to his stomach. Wrapping his scarf over his nose and mouth, he walks to another passenger car to escape the smoke. We can assume that some passengers started noticing that they were not feeling well. They were disoriented, so they went towards the back exit rather than the front one, thinking that the train had just entered the tunnel while in fact it was well over the middle of it. In the caboose, brakeman Michele Paolo assumes that the engineer has stopped for a signal. When the train doesn't move again, he decides to investigate. 100 yards into the tunnel, he is suddenly hit by a wave of nausea, followed by the horrible realization of what is happening. At Balvano Station in Italy's Apennine Mountains, assistant station master Giuseppe Salonia is concerned. It's 2.20 in the morning, and train 8025 is due to arrive at any moment. Yet he has received no confirmation that the 8017, known as the Black Market Express, has reached Bellamuro, the next station on the line. Salonia contacts Bellamuro and is told that the Express has not arrived and is already more than an hour late. He immediately telegraphs an alert down the line. Luigi Quaratino is a telegraph operator in Potenza. The 80.17, that was our trouble, starting at 2, 2.30 a.m. We needed to know where it was to decide the route of another train coming from Potenza. If the 80.17 did not get to its destination, the other train could not leave Potenza. It's up to the station crew at Balvano to find out what has happened. When the 8025 arrives just after 2.30 a.m., assistant station master Salonia decides to use its locomotive to look for the missing train. He is uncoupling the locomotive when Michele Paolo stumbles into view. The brakeman for the 8017 is faint with exhaustion and repeats the same words over and over. They are dead. They are all dead. While I was taking care of the other circuits, I heard an SOS. And I got a telegram saying that train 8017 had stopped in the Galleria della Armi due to insufficient traction. They did not know what had happened. The station crew at Balvano is about to find out. Trackman Giuseppe Motta is a member of the search party that arrives almost four hours after the Black Market Express enters the tunnel. There was a lot of smoke. It raised 20 centimeters from the floor. We were breathing through a mask. The boss kept masks at the station in case things like these would happen. I smelled sulfur. It was a very strong smell, even with the mask on. The crew enters one of the rail cars. They find the passengers dead from carbon monoxide poisoning.
Farther into the tunnel, the search party finds the crew of the two locomotives, dead in their cabs. Head engineer Matteo Giuliani is still at his throttle, his head resting on the window pane. It seems that they tried to load the engines to get power. But the more coal they would put in, the more carbon monoxide would come out. And that turned out to be deadly. Carbon monoxide makes people drowsy. Then it intoxicates the nerve cells, and the process is irreversible. The people closer to the engines would inhale more and would die in five to ten minutes. There are bodies outside the train as well. Miraculously, some are alive. Quindi queste persone o rimasero intossicate senza rendersi conto di quello che These people either were intoxicated without knowing what was going on or they knew what was going on, tried to run away and got hurt. While trying to get away, they fell or jumped off the train. The rescue crew uses their locomotive to pull the stricken train back to Balvano. A crowd gathers at Balvano as the Black Market Express finally arrives with its gruesome cargo. March 3rd, 1944, 5.10 a.m. The Black Market Express returns to Balvano Station. Police and the military organize the removal of bodies from the train. Residents of Balvano are there to help. Io ho visto una fotografia di dei cadaveri allineati sui marciapiedi della stazione di Balvano. I have seen a picture of the corpses lined up on the sidewalks and it was a tragic view. 500 corpses lined up on the two sidewalks of the Balvano station make for an apocalyptic picture. Apocalyptic. Quelli che davano segni di vita in the waiting room of the station, the rescuers were trying to resuscitate the ones that were showing signs of life. They were massaging them as such to wake them up. Some of them survived, but some did not. Olive oil salesman Domenico Mielli is found unconscious in one of the coach cars. The scarf over his nose and mouth helps save his life, although he will forever show the signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. Via la particolarità che Mira ha sempre raccontato. Mr. Miela has always said that he woke up the following morning and his black hair had turned completely gray. That means that in one night, the carbon monoxide did something that normally happens in many years of a person's life, which is to turn hair gray. 19 year old Ciro Pernecci has his military cloak still wrapped around his head. It too acts as a filter that saves his life. Shopkeeper Luigi Cozzolino is also revived, only to discover that his wife and eight-year-old son are dead. His brain tissue is so damaged by carbon monoxide that he is mentally incompetent for the rest of his life. At the end of the day, the final death count is 521. Because many carry false papers or no identification at all, 193 bodies are never identified. An inquest places blame on the use of an inferior grade of coal and on the added weight of the train itself, increased by the number of unauthorized passengers traveling that night. Try this was not the usual train accident where the train goes off the track and people die. There is no crash. The train did not manage to exit the tunnel. Why? The only explanation is that the poor quality of the coal did not allow the engines to perform properly. After the disaster, after the disaster, the railway authorities decided to have a permanent post at the Galleria dell'Armi. A railway worker would be guarding the tunnel day and night to check for smoke. It is one of the strangest rail disasters in history, and one of the worst. Yet only one newspaper is allowed to publish the story, burying it on an inside page. 
Una tragedia del genere oggi occuperebbe le prime pagine dei giornali per molti giorni e Today it would be in the front pages for many days. It would be major news. La maggior parte dei telegiornali. This could not happen back then because of psychological reasons due to the war. Psicologiche legate alla guerra. Già il 1944 was already one of the worst years of World War II. Non credo proprio che le autorità I don't think the Allies were keen on depressing people even more with such news. Today, a memorial chapel stands in Balvano, Italy, built by a relative of two of the victims of the Black Market Express. Salvatore Aventurato built the chapel in the cemetery of Balvano. He built it to remember his own father and brother, but I think he also wanted to remember all the other victims. Still today, the relatives of those victims have a strong connection with Balvano. Twice a year, many people from the Campania region go to Balvano to celebrate a mass for the victims in the chapel dedicated to them. It's a memory that does not go away. As I said before, the details might fade, the memory of that tragedy stays.